Welcome to Qigong 101. I'll be introducing some warm-up exercises and then a form called the Japanese crane progression and then a second form rather different in character called return to spring. So when we do Qigong we begin in what they call the horse riding position. Feet shoulder width apart, hands in front of the thighs with the fingers slightly separated. We try to achieve a sense of balance and stability by rocking gently back and forth on the balls of our feet and the heels until we can finally stand at a place where the weight feels it's equally balanced between the forefoot and the heels. When we're thinking about our posture, we want the shoulders to be squared away. Uh, we want to feel that the body is in alignment so that from the crown of the head through the shoulders, down through the hips, and to the instep, if one dropped a plumb line, it would run straight through those points in our anatomy. We want to relax the abdominal muscles. And we want to start by just simply slowing down the breath, becoming aware of our bodies, stilling some of the chatter in our minds. And then we want to try to think as we are breathing about the weight in the upper part of the body dropping down into the hips in the lower part of the body so that with each exhalation imagining that a little more of that heaviness in the body is actually dropping down toward the feet. And that sense of heaviness that develops in the lower part of the body then can begin to help us feel an essential connection with the ground, a rootedness with the, firm, with the uh, ground beneath us. And at the same time, as we're breathing in, the upper part of the body becomes lighter. We begin to feel that we can lift the arms during these Qigong progressions without much muscular effort, just simply allowing the subtle energy that's a whole part of the Qigong philosophy to work with the body in elevating the arms. So in the last analysis, what we're striving for is a kind of a sense of, of heaviness and stability in the lower part of the body, and a sense of, of lightness and connection with the firmament, with the atmosphere in the upper part of the body. So a couple of warm-up exercises. These are classic Qigong warm-ups. And the first one really has to do with getting used to the shifting of weight from one foot to the other, which is something that has to we have to do quite often in these forms. So we just begin by transferring the weight to the left hand foot and swinging the arms, shifting to the other foot. Being conscious as we do this of the redistribution of the weight onto the left and then the right foot. And the arms just follow the movement of the hips Everything is very relaxed. And then a variation. And you can do this as long as you want, but it gets the body primed for doing the forms. And then you just go back to the first movement and then slow it down. And a second warm up exercise is designed to help release the shoulders where we hold a lot of tension in our bodies. And so it begins with the weight shifting onto the left foot and then the right foot goes forward and the toe touches and then comes back. And the other foot, and back. You could imagine the arms encircling a large ball as the arms move back and forth. All the weight shifts. We step forward, back, weight shift, forward, and back.
the Japanese crane progression. There are 21 parts to it, and typically we would repeat each one of the actions, uh, each piece of the form, uh, five or six times, and then move on to the next one. But rule of thumb is, is that you can repeat each one of the movements as many times as you like uh, before moving on to the other one. There's, there's no um, particular number of movements that's prescribed here. So we begin with the hands in front of the thighs in the horse riding position. Again, finding that point of stability. Breathing, relaxing the abdomen. And this is the first of the 21 movements. As the hands move up, we keep everything relaxed. The wrists are relaxed. The elbows are relaxed. The hands just drift up and drift down with as little exertion as possible. And many of the movements can be done rhythmically with the cycles of the breath, in-breath, out-breath, in-breath, out-breath. The second movement, third movement. As you do this, 90% of your weight shifts to the leg in the direction of the tilt. The next one. And this, this, this is the next one. And the next one. The next one. It's important to point out that with each of these movements where you're turning from side to side, all of them, the movement comes out of the hips. You're not twisting the back. You're not torquing the knees. The 
It all comes from the center of the body, from the hips. And also the arms are not reaching across the body. They always remain at the midline so that the arms are following the direction that the body is taking. The next one. The next one. The next one. The next one, we place the right foot forward and we bend at the waist, cross the arms at the wrists, come back, bending forward, crossing at the wrists, and come back. And then we change, the arms come straight up in front, and push. The weight moving to the forefoot, and then back to the back. Next one. And then for the next one. They put the other foot forward and do the same three movements. The next one.
Next one. And the next one. The next one. And then the next one, and the arms reach the top, large body circles, as if the arms were the arms of a large clock. You get to the top, you change direction, go the other way. And the next one, placing all of the weight on the right foot, lifting the opposite foot, at the same time pulling up with the opposite hand. It's important to shift all the weight to the weight-bearing foot before you left the opposite foot. And the last one. With the last one, we close our eyes. We become aware of our posture again, returning to that place of stability. And with the thumbs touching and one hand resting on the other, we become aware of our breathing again. And as you breathe in, the hands drift up to the chest. As you breathe out, Hands turn over facing the ground and drift down to the lower abdomen. Hands rising and falling with the currents of the breath.
And then in the conclusion, we return to the horse riding position, with the palms in front of the thighs. We just spend a moment checking in with ourselves, noting whether there's any greater clarity in our minds, whether our bodies feel more integrated and relaxed, and whether there might be any subtle changes in the energy that we're experiencing in our physical system. And that concludes the Japanese crane progression. It's important to remember that when you're doing Qigong, that there are three elements to keep in mind. One of them is just the movement, um, the execution of the form itself. But another thing has to do with our mood and the emotional state with which we begin uh, the, the exercise. We want to think of this as being an uplifting experience, so we want to have a positive disposition when we do Qigong. And then mindfulness is the third ingredient. So movement, mood, and mindfulness. And my, mindfulness simply has to do with the fact as you are going through the form, that if you become distracted, if your mind wanders, to just gently bring your attention back to what the body is doing so that there is a kind of a sense of tangible mind-body connection. So the second form is called the return to spring. And as I say, it's a little different. Whereas with the Japanese crane progression, we try to kind of create a connection between the 21 different movements of uh, the crane progression so that it feels like there's a, there's a kind of a continuity between each one of the pieces, a kind of a flow to the, the whole way that the form feels to us. The uh, return to spring is broken much more down into discrete units without a sense of connection really between the various pieces of the form. So that's one of the notable differences. So we begin, but many of the other principles do uh, apply just as equally to return to spring as they would to the Japanese crane. For this one, we begin with the horse riding position as before. And then we bring our hands together in kind of a prayer position. And we breathe in. And we gently blow into the palms. And then the right hand begins to fall, followed by the left. And at the lower abdomen, the thumbs touch. We form a kind of a diamond with the thumbs and the fingers. And that's the starting position. And then we turn our head to the left and to the right. And we turn left again and we move at the hips and the hand comes out and moves down the midline. Knees are slightly flexed as we do this. There's a slight weight shift from left to right as we move in each of those directions. But there's a continuous movement of the hands. Out, across, and down. And again, as with the Japanese crane, you can repeat these as many times as you like. For the second movement, we bend at the waist with our arms out, and then we swing our hips to the left, and as we do so, the hands go to the right. We move upright, the hands come across the abdomen, so the hips are moving right and left, and the arms are moving in the opposite direction.
For the third movement, we dip from left to right without moving the feet. And as we do so, with each time we lower ourselves, the arms come up. And the arms are turning in circles like the wheels of a bicycle. So as the body sinks, the arms come up. As the body rises, the arms go down. For the third movement, the left hand comes up the midline and moves out. The weight shifts from left to right. It's kind of like swimming the crawl. For the next one, we begin with the arms just slightly lifting at the sides. But then each time that the arms move upward, they move upward a little bit higher. And then we begin shifting the weight right to left. And the eyes move in the opposite direction of the weight shifts. The movement becomes fairly dramatic. And then for the last one, the sixth movement is very simple. Begins again, breathing out and bending at the waist. Breathing in, coming up, throwing back the shoulders and looking skyward. Breathing out. And in. And for the next one, we turn slightly to the right, put one foot forward, like one of the earlier movements. As the body dips, the hands come up, 
as the body comes up, the hands go down. But this is done at a little quicker pace. And then we move to the opposite foot, looking in the other direction. And then we turn back in the opposite direction. And this time, all the weight is on the forefoot rather than the back foot. We put our hands together like so, and the movement is the same. And the feet come back together, and the hands move into the prayer position, and then the hands rise, creating a canopy with the fingers, and as they come back down, this is the in-breath, and this is the out-breath. Knees bend slightly. And then the last time the hands move up, reach a little higher toward the sky, stretching, and then slowly bring the hands back down, still in the prayer position, to the breastbone. And for the next one, eyes look left, turn to the right, and as they go left again, the hands move in the opposite direction. We begin to shift the weight side to side. And then gradually we begin to draw that movement back in again. And for the next one, the arms separate, come out to the sides, and then come forward, creating fists, dropping down, opening the hands, this is a movement as if you were a juggler passing a ball from hand to hand. The elbows rise, the weight shifts, and the little ball passes from hand to hand.
And then you let this movement gradually die away. This movement begins with the arms slowly rising, moving out to the side, palms facing heavenward, coming back together, bending at the waist, and coming up and lifting and drifting. The arms come up, the eyes lift, and they drop. And the next to last one is actually called the universe trembles. So in your rooted position, feeling your connection with the ground, you simply begin to bounce. Everything should feel loose. All the tension in the shoulders and the knees should be released. And then when you feel ready, you can slow that back down. Until you come to a stop. And the last movement reiterates the opening movement. Hands in the prayer position, bringing them to the lips, blowing gently into the hands. The right hand drifts down the midline, followed by the left. And once again, they come together in a diamond shape at the lower abdomen. And as before, you spend a moment checking in with yourself, noting your breathing, looking for any places of tension that remain in the body, breathing into those places to help release the tension and the muscular tightness. and that is return to spring. Thus endeth Qigong 101.